Hi there, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are gonna take a look at Strata 1.2. Um, this is, I've just uploaded it to itch.io and the asset store. Um, it's more of a quality of life kind of update. There's a couple of new generators and a couple new little features to support um, room sequence generation. And I added a few small examples and stuff. So it's not a huge update, but there is some good stuff in there. So I will just uh, show you really quickly. Okay, so the first one we have is this cave digger generator. So this is basically just a pretty simple algorithm that, uh, let's open the settings for it. It basically just will choose to clear a certain percentage of the map. So right now we're clearing 25% uh, of the map. And now notably that is based on in this pass, right? So it doesn't count how much empty space was cleared before. Uh, it just says, okay, if we've got, in this case, I think it's a thousand squares in the map, uh, we're gonna make sure, we're gonna keep digging and clearing until we clear uh, 250 of them. But you can see it generates some pretty cool shapes. What's interesting is that we get these little bits left over. Um, it's a little more jagged uh, than um, cellular automata, right? It's kind of does this random walk and turns around and doubles back on itself and digs and digs and digs. Um, obviously, we could dig out more of the map if we want to. There's 50%, right? Or we could dig less by adjusting the slider there um, and so on. Here, we're just, it's really simple. We're just using the default empty character, which in this case is zero. Uh, and of course you could use it to write some other character, right? You could write in grass or water or whatever you wanted uh, by changing the character here to correspond to something in the board library. Okay, so we've got that one. We've got also just Perlin noise. Really absolutely simple here. Uh, I think it's the only thing that we can change here. I really just put this in kind of as a way for people to get an idea of some of the different things that are available. Um, all we can do here is scale the noise. If we scale it down, we get these more organic rounded shapes, right? And if we scale it down a lot, we can get these kind of uh, blobby kind of lava lamp shapes. These might be useful in an organic, generating organic levels. And then obviously we can go up and create this more sort of noisy, jittery kind of stuff. If we go all the way up, I think it just gets really, yeah, it's just like sort of static. but. You might find this useful maybe as part of something else, or you could do this as a later pass to fill in the empty space, right? Uh, with some kind of randomized floor tiles or whatever. It's just another option, another tool in your uh, palette of procedural colors to paint with, as it were. Uh, then we have an example for room sequence only. So this one has a new, the change here is this is one of the quality of life improvements. I've added some scene gizmos. So basically it tells us what template has been drawn here uh, and then shows us the direction that we moved in to get here, right? So we can really see, um, we can really see, we can visualize what's happening, right? So here we have our start room, uh, which is the lava, and then the end room, which is the grass, the cross with the grass. Uh, and we can really visualize, right? We can say, okay, we're good. Like here, right, you might not know that actually we went this way, right? Because these are connected. But so we can see, okay, we went up and then it down and, and so on, right? So it's really just a, a debugging tool. Uh, these are, you can, ch I think I added an option. I actually did this one a little while ago. I'm trying to remember what I did. I added an option to destroy, yeah, destroy the room chain holder objects or not. This is really only if you have multiple room chains, it can get a little confused um, because it does actually do a find in the scene um, to get a reference to them. So if you're doing multiple passes, you'll probably want to destroy them. But in cases where you have one, you can persist them in the scene and then you can use them. So the path visualizer actually will tell you the node position, uh, the direction, it's zero for that one, but here the direction that we moved in, right, to move out of here, 
the debug string, I think it's just what we're using to visualize in the scene, and then the path direction as an enum, right? So this was a response, I, um, a user on the forum R618 who was asking about navigation based on rooms and basically preserving that path generation data. So I added this and then also just it's made it useful for more people by having a visualization component to it so you can kind of use it during debugging, right? This is all just scene view stuff, so it obviously won't affect your game uh, at runtime. But um, it is when you're generating, especially these room chains and you're trying to guarantee connectivity and sometimes you forget to put a door or you flag something that says it has a door and it doesn't and you can't figure out what's going on. It can be, this can be a little bit fiddly to set up. So having a little uh, additional visualization tool uh, is pretty nice. And I think that's it. The, uh, I just cleaned up the cube world example and the branching, um, this one, the branching tunnel profiler, which I think I showed in a previous video in the 1.1 video. I just cleaned this up a little bit. There was a um, missing asset uh, from when I uploaded to the asset store. I had something in my development folder instead of in the main folder. And so I fixed that. Um, and a couple other small little bugs. Thank you guys for reporting bugs. Uh, please email me at support at mirrorfishmedia.com. Uh, to let me know about any bugs, but also just let me know how you're using the tool. I've been kind of surprised to see that people are, a fair number of people are using it for 3D stuff. That was kind of why I included the cube world. I need to, one known issue with the cube world thing uh, that I'll just bring to your attention that I haven't fixed yet, but I can if other people want it, is that when you regenerate, it just overwrites on top, so it fills up. Um, and that's just because I don't have any, I'm used to refreshing and clearing the tile map and I don't have any, uh, you know, object handling because we're placing cubes here. So that's something that I can um, fix in a future version, but that's a known, a known issue at the moment. Um, I'm just trying to focus on the tile map application. But if you're using it for 3D, let me know and maybe I'll develop further in that um, direction. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you found this useful, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like on the video, and leave me a comment. Uh, that's always appreciated. And don't forget to check out the forum thread on the Unity forums, and there's also a little forum on itch.io if you're over there uh, where we've been chatting about, the, about Strata as well. So yeah, thanks so much, and I will see you next time.